So Biden has been making some disastrous moves when it comes to foreign policy. Um, recently, he released the report that concluded that um, MBS, Mohammed bin Salman of Saudi Arabia, is to blame for the killing of Jamal Khashoggi. He released that report. Now, that's a good thing. It's a very good thing that he did that. But, but... He released it, and there are no plans to, like, sanction him, punish him, take any sort of retaliatory action, even if it's just a tepid slap on the wrist. There's nothing. There's nothing on that front. So, that's sort of pathetic, that you're releasing the thing that says, yeah, he did it, but there's no actual action accompanying the release of the report. And in fact, it gets worse than that. Now, Aaron Mate made this point on Twitter. I think it's plausible. I don't know if it's true, okay? But his point was the airstrikes that Biden just did in Syria against Iranian-backed militias, Shia militias, that could have been sort of a mea culpa for MBS, saying to him, like, yeah, I released the report. I know you're pissed about it, but I'm still your boy, and we're still tight allies, and so I'm going to bomb the people who you want me to bomb. I'm bombing Shia militias. So in some ways, that could be like, I'm so sorry I released the report. Let me make it up to you. To MBS. I mean, if that's the case, that's the saddest thing I've ever seen. So CNBC says the following, White House defends decision not to punish Saudi Crown Prince, says U.S. does not sanction foreign leaders. Excuse you? The White House defended its decision not to target Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman after a U.S. intelligence report linked the royal to the 2018 murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. So, what would be the correct response to this? I mean, there's a number of things that you could do. First and foremost, I'd kick Saudi Arabia out of the U.N. Human Rights Council. They don't deserve to be there. I mean, it's just, that's beyond obvious. Um, the other thing you do is immediately cut off all weapon sales to them. All of them. There's been some weird, again, more Weasley stuff from the Biden administration where they act like they might crack down in some ways and then they have these gigantic loopholes where they're not cracking down at all. The recent one was, we're not going to help anymore with what's happening in Yemen. And then we learn after that, no, 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 they meant we're not going to help with any offensive strikes in Yemen. But they said, defensive, sure, we'll, we'll help with that. But then they could just define everything as defensive. So it's totally Weasley, because Saudi Arabia is effectively carrying out a genocide in Yemen. You know, I know that's a strong word, but I'm using it on purpose. There's famine, there's a total embargo, they can't get food, they can't get medicine. I mean, it is really probably the number one catastrophe, on uh, acute catastrophe on Earth right now. And we're actively facilitating and helping and aiding and still arming and backing Saudi Arabia. So you kick them off the Human Rights Council. That's the first thing you do. The second thing you do is very, very targeted sanctions on the leaders of Saudi Arabia, and you cut off all the weapon sales. Um, I get it. You get it. You know, there's this relationship that involves oil and the petrodollar and all this stuff, but at some point, your ethics and your morality has to override business as usual. Because there's no end to the depths of depravity and immorality that you can get to if you prioritize business as usual, uh, usual above everything else. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. To release that report and then say, but also there's going to be no punishment. It's inexcusable. It's inexcusable. He's carrying out a genocide and he murdered a journalist. It's not an option to do nothing, but they're really doing nothing. Think of the precedent that that sets. Think of the precedent that that sets. So if you're our ally, you can get away with genocide, you can get away with mur murdering journalists. I don't want to hear a goddamn word about how much the U.S. government cares in and believes in the First Amendment and a free press and the Constitution. No. If you're going to have no reaction when our, one of our top allies kills a journalist, if you're going to actively aid and help facilitate a genocide, and just so we're clear, those airstrikes that happened in Syria, which may have been a payback to say, I'm sorry, Saudi Arabia. Um, those airstrikes were illegal under international law and under U.S. law. 
And funny enough, like, these are the types of things that are so egregious that they actually might merit impeachment. And nobody's going to talk about impeachment on this. Because the Republicans all, all probably agree with it, too. They like it. They want to see more bombing happen. I mean, the Republican politicians, the voters do not want to see that. The politicians, they kind of want to see that. So, every step recently that Biden has made on foreign policy has been atrocious and a disaster. And this is another example of it right here. 